Hey everyone, James Nigemeyer here. Thank you for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to respond to a question that one of the viewers, Michael, he left a question down in the comments section of my last video, and it was about swim jig fishing. What was my uh, setup like? What, whether I used braid or fluorocarbon or, or whatever I used. I thought it'd be a great uh, topic for a video. Yes, it is winter. But in certain parts of the countries and in certain waterways like rivers and shallower natural lakes with grasses like in Florida and uh, probably Georgia and uh, Alabama and even parts of uh, Texas, a swim jig's a, a great bait year round when you're fishing areas where there's not a lot of deep water. But some guys will actually fish swim jigs into deeper waters with say a half ounce head and bottom bumping them around. And so this is uh, something that I think uh, some viewers would like to hear about, how I set mine up, the, the why I set it up this way, and uh, the lines that I use for that. Before I get right into it, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, drop a comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts on the videos or if you have questions. Uh, a lot of times these questions are great, just like this video to kind of just chew the fat on a specific topic. And uh, if you guys like this kind of a format, let me know and we'll do more of these. So swim jig fishing. There's a, you know, just a, just a basic swim jig setup. Basically this is, uh, I believe is a quarter ounce. And um, I have a, this is a Strike King Swim and Caffeine Shad swim bait on the back of there. I'm just threading it right up on there. And the question is what kind of line setup do I use for fishing a swim jig? And I think most of the pros will say that they use like a 30 or 50 pound braided line. And I think that's great. I actually feel like a uh, braided line is great for fishing a swim, swim jig, specifically around vegetation, lily pads, grasses, different things like that. And a lot of times, the fish really aren't coming up behind the bait to study it. They're just coming up, they're just seeing it come by and you're reeling it past an ambush spot and they just soup, they just eat it up just like a spinner bait. But it has, um, you know, it doesn't have blades. So it's not as kind of invasive, it's not as flashy. And in certain situations, the fish really like that, specifically in clear waters. This viewer asked me, his name's Michael. He asked me whether I use braid or fluorocarbon because he fishes lakes that are clearer. I think he fishes like Table Rock and Missouri Lakes and uh, Bull Shoals and uh, Stockton, places like that, that are uh, clearer water, maybe not as much cover, maybe definitely not any grass for the most part. So he was wondering, hey, do you use braid or fluorocarbon for that? And to get finally to answering the question, this rod is actually still set up with the uh, swim jig that I used in uh, the last tournament of my season uh, over on Sam Rayburn, actually responsible for putting in one of the fish in my boat that day. And this is the exact setup. Um, if we'll just go from the rod all the way down, this is a Luz Magnum Bass 3, seven foot, six, medium heavy is the power, and then the action's moderate fast. So with a moderate fast bend is, um, you're actually gonna have more of a gentle, not as a, not as not as hard of, uh, of a of an angle like that. So it's instead of it being like a uh, maybe an 80 20 or 70 30, you're you're actually having something where it's maybe a 60 40. And what I mean by that is 60% of the rod is not bending and 40% is. So it has more of a gentle bend. It's not as fast of an action. It's a moderate fast. So it bends. It's more what we call parabolic. And uh, you hear that term used a lot with guys that are throwing crankbaits because with crankbaits and treble hooks, the hooks are not as big and a fish comes up, eats the bait. You want them to be able to take it in as they kind of suck that bait in. Same thing with a swim jig. And um, you want them to be able to have the bait. So you're not generally using uh, graphite rods. And if you're using graphite rods with crankbaits, you're using a, a more lighter action. Most guys are going to more of a composite or even a fiberglass blank for their crankbait application. But for my swim jig application, I'm just using a carbon fiber or graphite rod, 7.6, and, and then a good, of course I go to that moderate fast. This is actually a rod that Bill Lowen uh, suggested I use for my swim jigs, and I really like it. At first I thought 7.6 is a little longer than I want, but 
Um, it really is just a great setup. I feel like I can throw that swim jig a long ways, great in really clear water like Michael's situation, and I can sweep it and pull up slack if the fish is swimming to me, which is a situation that you have with a lot of swim jig fishing. That fish will just come up behind the swim jig, suck it in, and start swimming right off the bank or right towards you. And uh, you need to pick up that line, which is the reason that I'm using an 8 3 to 1 gear ratio. This is a, a, a loose hyper mag. And so the combination of longer rod and a faster gear ratio reel. I can actually sweep the rod and turn the handle and catch up to that fish and remove any slack and then begin to uh, really set the hook on, on that fish. And this actually swim jig actually has a pretty pretty decent uh, you know hook gauge, if you can see right there. That's, that's not your, I mean, there's a lot of different trains of thoughts into what size hook gauges guys will use for swim jigs. Because I use braid for my main line, I'm okay with a big heavy hook. That really doesn't bother me. But if I was just gonna use, you know, a fluorocarbon, then I would probably want more of a, you know, medium wire or a lighter wire. And, but for the most part, this is a setup that I use no matter where I am. If I feel like I can catch fish on swim jigs, this is the setup I use. So to get to that, this is 30 pound test braided line. And I'm gonna go ahead and about probably maybe 10 feet up, I've got an FG knot. I wonder if you guys can see that. I've got an FG knot right there. And that joins that braided line to my 16 pound test gamma edge fluorocarbon. And again, I use about an eight to 10 foot, ah, it's gotta be longer than eight. It's probably somewhere in that eight to 10 feet of length of leader material. It doesn't bother me that I, because I'm using an FG knot, doesn't bother, bother me that I'm, you know, reeling it in to the guides. It doesn't inhibit my casting because that FG knot so slender and thin goes through the guides really well. And I don't find that it makes any problem for the knot that repeated back and through, back and forth through the guides. It just doesn't bother it. It's such a strong line that I'm using, the 30 pound test braided line. And then the, uh, the Gamma Edge Fluorocarbon 16. If I feel like I'm around a lot of big fish, I'll go to 20. But that's a setup that I really fish just about anywhere. And the reason I do that is because obviously braid is opaque. And I feel like sometimes that braid is coming by the fish first. If that at all turns the fish off, I, I just feel like I'm going to try to maximize the number of bites with the fish that I present my bait to. So I went ahead and put a fluorocarbon leader. In a long cast and really shallow water, that braid's still gonna probably um, pass by the fish first. But when I fish my swim jig in shallow water on a long cast, I, what I'll actually do is keep my rod tip up. Essentially, the fluorocarbon's gonna pass that fish first. So with that longer leader of fluorocarbon out in front of my braid, I feel like I have less of a chance to spook the fish with that fluorocarbon than I do with the braid as it comes across the fish's face or into their zone. It's just more natural. It's just translucent. Obviously fluorocarbon is a proven uh, material for catching fish, especially in really clear water and in heavily fished pressure, fishing pressure situations. So, so that's my setup. Seven, six, medium heavy power and moderate fast action, 30 pound test braided line, eight, three to one gear ratio, 16 pound test, Gamma Edge Fluorocarbon. That's what I use to uh, fish a swim jig. It's a great tactic. I have a lot of fun with it, and I feel like it's a really effective tool. Thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, and until next time, good fishing.